and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. On behalf of the Ottawa Church of God, we want to say welcome. It's wonderful knowing that so many of you have been watching the broadcast every Sunday. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Get ready. I believe the sermon today will inspire you, encourage you, and bring transformation to your life. And now, let's welcome Bishop Bruno to the pulpit. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is a good God. Uh, today, we continue our sermon series, God Has a Plan. God Has a Plan. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So what is God saying in this verse? God is saying your life is headed somewhere good. The best days of your life are still ahead of you. Uh, God is saying something good is going to happen to you. Uh, that the best is yet to come in your life. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 27 says, I, the Lord Almighty, all-powerful, have made this plan. No one can stop me now. The Lord of armies himself has planned it. Uh, therefore, who can stand in its way? It is his hand that is outstretched, so who can turn it back? God's plan will come to fulfillment whether anyone else likes it or not. Nothing can stop God's plan. God's plan always prevails. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 21, uh, people may plan all kinds of things, uh, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. In, in other words, God will always have his way. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Uh, so your life was planned out by God before you were born. God plans for us a life that is full of blessings. Glory to God. God has delivered the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. And God's plan for the Israelites is to bring them to the land he promised their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the promised land is God's plan for his people. The promised land is the plan of God for his people. Uh, so what is the meaning of the promised land for us today? The promised land for us today is the abundant life. The promised land for us today is the spirit-filled life. The promised land for us today is the life that overflows with peace and joy and victory. Glory to God. So the promised land is God's plan for his people. God wants all his children to live a victorious life. God has not planned any defeats for you. But God has planned victory for you in every circumstance, every trial, and every temptation. 100% victory is God's plan for your life. Entering the promised land is all about living a victorious life. A victorious life begins in your mind. I want to say that again. God wants us to live a victorious life. And a victorious life begins in your mind. Uh, the Gospel of Mark chapter 5, we see something tremendous here about, about the mind, about the victorious life that begins in your mind. Uh, Jesus heals the man with, with 2,000 demons. Uh, uh, his mind was taken over by 2,000 demons. He had a nervous breakdown. He was mentally, psychologically messed up. 
So Jesus drove out 2,000 demons and the man came back to his right mind. When the people in the town came, they found the man sitting at the feet of Jesus in his right mind. It is a blessing to wake up every day and to be clothed in your right mind. A victorious life begins in your mind. So when the prodigal son left the father's house, he was not in his right mind. But then he repented and came back to the father's house and came back to his right mind. Hallelujah. When King David murdered Uriah and committed adultery with Bathsheba, King David was not in his right mind. So that's why God sent the prophet Nathan, and Nathan uh, uh, preached to David the word of the Lord. And David repented and came back to his right mind. So a victorious life begins uh, in your mind. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says, We have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. We have the mind of Christ. Uh, um, uh, the mind of Christ is the plan of God for your life. The mind of Christ is God's plan for his people. The mind of Christ has incredible power. The mind of Christ brings happiness and inner peace. The mind of Christ brings wisdom and knowledge. The mind of Christ brings divine success. According to scriptures, every believer has access to the mind of Christ through faith. That is a powerful thing. The mind which created the entire universe. And yet we have access to that kind of mind. We have access to the mind of Christ. Yes, you have access to the mind of Christ, but the question is, are you using it? Uh, it does you no good to have access to the mind of Christ uh, if you're not using it. Even though we have been saved, uh, most Christians uh, are still using the old mind. And that explains why so many Christians uh, are spiritually crippled and paralyzed. Because even though they have been saved, uh, they are still using the old mind. Our minds need to be consistently renewed, moving away from the mind of the flesh and into the mind of Christ. Listen to me. What's going on inside your mind uh, is important because your thoughts can change your life. Most of us need to practice uh, a new thinking habit. So to walk in victory, to claim your destiny, start thinking about yourself the way God does. Uh, as a child of God, you are equipped uh, to handle anything that comes your way. Glory to God. Judges uh, chapter 6 verse 12. When the angel of the Lord appeared uh, to Gideon, the angel said, The Lord is with you, you mighty men of valor, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you. Uh, this angel was a manifestation of God himself. When the angel called Gideon a mighty warrior or a mighty man of valor, uh, Gideon thought the angel was joking. Gideon was the least promising member of his family which was the weakest clan in his tribe. But by the time God trained uh, Gideon for battle, by the time God finished training Gideon for battle, Gideon was leading 300 men against 120,000 troops. Incredible! It was an impossible mission. But with Gideon's small army, God sent the Midianites running. There is no reason to worry about why people won't help you out. You have God and God is enough. I want to say it again. You don't have to worry about whether you have anybody to help you or not. You have God and God is enough. One of the greatest miracles of the Old Testament was the conquest of Jericho. When the nation of Israel crossed the Jordan River, only Jericho stood between them and the promised land. 
It was when the people of God by faith followed the commands of God that the walls of Jericho fall down, fell down. Uh, the same God who brought the walls of Jericho down will bring yours down today. Hallelujah. So Israel is on the edge of the promised land. They were literally right there, right at the edge of the promised land. All they had to do was take that step of faith and walk in. Take that step of faith and walk in. 450 years of turmoil, 450 years of difficulty, uh, 450 years of slavery and oppression are about to come to an end. I want to encourage you today. The Lord is saying, be encouraged. That turmoil, that difficulty, that problem in your life is about to come to an end. Glory to God. God was about to bring them to a new place to live. And I want you to know that in the spirit realm, God is about to bring you to a new place. In the spirit realm, there is a shift. There is a transition taking place in your life. The old life was going to be put behind them. Glory. The old life was going to put behind them. Uh, the anxiety, the depression, the oppression was going to be put behind them. And the same for you today. I am believing God that the things you are struggling with are going to be put behind you. Hallelujah. A new life is waiting for them. What a message for the people in the world. In the midst of this pandemic, a new life is waiting for you. Uh, they, they just had to face the giants in the land and whatever else they had to face. So let me say this to you, no matter what issues or what problems that are going on in your life right now, God has brought you to this moment so that you can take a step of faith and step into your promised land. So many times we pull back because of fear, but God wants you to take a step of faith and step into your promised land. So let me ask you, are you a person that will step out in faith and become the man or the woman that God wants you to be? Will you take that step? Are you ready to step into your promised land? That's the question. Are you ready to step into your promised land? Israel had a land promised to them. They had a promise of entering into God's rest. But they had to go out in power. They had to go out in authority and claim their inheritance. I am telling you, it's time to claim your inheritance. The word inheritance is mentioned in the book of Joshua 60 times. God is trying to tell you it's time to claim your inheritance. Instead, instead of spending so, so much time thinking about your circumstances, you need to spend your time thinking about your inheritance. Glory to God. So the Israelites left Mount Sinai and traveled through the desert to a place called Kadesh. Uh, God told Moses, sent 12 men, one from each tribe to spy out Canaan, the land that I will give to the Israelites. Moses chose 12 men to explore the land and report and report what they found. The 12 spies, including Joshua and Caleb, left for Canaan. Have you ever had to wait for a doctor's report concerning your health? Uh, 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 that can be stressful. After 40 days, the spies came back with the report. But it was an evil report, the Bible says. They said it is a good land, uh, but there are giants in the land, and the cities have high walls. But Joshua and Caleb said, let's go up and possess the land. We are well able to overcome those giants. That's the language of faith. Let's go up and possess the land. Let's go up and claim our inheritance. For we are well able to overcome those giants. Uh, 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 we can defeat them. We can do it. Now Joshua and Caleb had enough faith to claim it and receive it. 
Uh, they, they, they claimed their inheritance. They had enough faith to claim it and receive it. And I'm asking you today, if you need healing in your life, do you have enough faith to claim it and receive it? If you need a miracle in your life right now, do you have enough faith to claim it and receive it? If you need a breakthrough in your life right now, do you have enough faith to claim it and receive it? I believe you do because the Bible says God has given to every man the measure of faith. You've got faith in your heart to claim it and receive it. You've just got to release your faith in Jesus' name. But the Israelites believed the evil report that the people in the land were too strong uh, to conquer. Uh, the other ten spies uh, are convinced uh, that the Israelites cannot overcome the giants in Canaan. Uh, we all face giants in our lives, but the question is, do you believe that you can overcome them? Uh, glory to God. Uh, we should never forget, we are promised land people. Uh, promised land people do not talk doubts. Promised land people do not talk unbelief and fear. Promised land people do not talk defeat. We are promised land people. Promised land people do not say, I'll never make it. Promised land people do not say, I don't have what it takes. Uh, promised land people do not say, my mother died uh, of this illness. Uh, it's going to kill me too. We are promised land people. Promised land people do not say, I don't know what I'm going to do. Or uh, 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 that's the way the cookie crumbles. Or uh, that's the way the ball bounces. Promised land people do not talk that way. We are promised land people. And we speak the word of faith. Uh, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, uh, even our faith. That's the way promised land people talk. Uh, he was wounded uh, for our transgressions. Uh, he was bruised uh, for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace uh, was upon him. And by his stripes uh, we are healed. Uh, this is the way promised land people talk. Glory to God. Promised land people say, what shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? So Joshua and Caleb were so sure that they could overcome the giants. They were positive they could overcome the giants. Joshua and Caleb were confident that they could overcome those giants in the land. Uh, and the question is, why were they so sure? Why were they so convinced? Why were they fully persuaded that they could overcome those giants? Why did Joshua and Caleb believe that the Israelites could overcome the people in Canaan? I'll tell you why. Because Joshua and Caleb had a different mindset. They had a victory victorious mindset and remember a victorious life begins in your mind uh, so, so Joshua believed, uh, Caleb believed, uh, they were fully persuaded in their minds. It was possible because with God all things are possible. You can overcome any giant with the help of God, with the power of God, with the anointing of God. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint and not faint. God is inside of you and greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Let, there is one biblical principle here. There is one great example uh, Joshua and Caleb gave us. And the, and the principle is this. If you trust God, you can overcome anything. Glory to God. That's powerful. Uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb gave us this biblical principle, uh, this example in their own lives. If you trust God, you can overcome anything. As the Bible says, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. If you trust God, he will always cause you to triumph. Uh, uh, if you trust God, you can overcome anything. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Uh, verse 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will show you which path to take. In other words, if you trust God, you can overcome anything. Uh, Psalm 25 verse 2, 
Oh my God, in you I trust. Oh my God, in you I trust. Oh, let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. If you trust God, you can overcome anything. Psalm 125 verse 1. Those who trust in the Lord, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, which cannot be shaken, but abides forever. If you trust God, you can overcome anything. Hallelujah. Uh, when things are looking good, remember God still has a plan. When the bottom drops out, remember God still has a plan. When things fall apart, remember God still has a plan. In the midst of this pandemic, remember God still has a plan. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God does not want to harm you. God wants to uplift you. He wants to bless you. He wants to energize you. He wants to invigorate you. He wants to empower you. God is not the one trying to harm you. It's the devil. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come so you might have life and have it much more abundantly. Glory to God. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. It is God's desire for you to live a blessed life. Your future will be full of blessings. Hallelujah. God's plan is always bigger than your circumstances. I don't know what circumstances you're facing right now, but God's plan is always bigger than your circumstances. Your problems may be big, but God's plan is bigger than your problems. And I feel led to tell you that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. As the psalmist says, I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Hallelujah. God has a wonderful plan for your life. Hallelujah. And now I pray for your healing. I pray for restoration in your life. I pray for miracles in your life. Many miracles in your life. I pray for your breakthrough. It's time for your breakthrough. Glory to God. I pray for your family. I pray for supernatural protection. I pray that the Holy Ghost in the next few days will bring you into the promised land. The spirit-filled life. The abundant life. The life that overflows with peace and joy and power. Glory to God. I pray for deliverance. Glory. And now, may the Lord bless you and, and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Shalom. Until I see you next Sunday. God bless.
I am a child.